We are into the repotting season and we have quite a few customers who trust us to do the repotting for them for several reasons. Some of them may be getting on in age and they cannot manage the trees and some of them are just not confident enough so they bring them to us so we do it properly for them. Not only that, many of them need a haircut so they're brought for trimming. So it's like going to the barber or going to a physiotherapist or doctor to have a complete health check except that this is a plant health check. This customer, I'm going to keep his privacy, he's a gentleman getting on in years but he has meticulously kept a complete record of all his trees. So you can see the Chinese elm he purchased before 2004. That means he's had it more than 20 years. I think he, he's kept it for about 25 or 30 years. And he reckons it's 50 years old. So this is the complete list. And you see how methodical this uh, gentleman is. He's kept all the botanical names as well. And the dates when he purchased it. So this is the list of trees that he's left with us. Nine trees and I'm going to go through all of them to repot them and restyle them because many of them could do with a bit of wiring again. So like this elm, this is badly in need of wiring but they're all very healthy but they could do with a repot. Usually our customers are very trusting, they trust us completely so we have a free hand as to what we do, what size pot to choose for them, how to style them. So I have a completely free hand. I thought I would use this occasion to show you how I go about improving their trees. Look at this beautiful little hornbeam. This one, look at it, beautiful twin trunk. I've hidden his name so you don't see it. But there are one or two defects there. For a start, you can see that branch, crossing branch like that. Things like that I will take out to improve so that it is more uh, stylish, as it were. So we're going to analyze each of these trees to show how we can improve them. So I hope you will learn from what we do. So we will look at each tree in turn. So let's do the first of the trees that our friend has brought to us. And this is a hornbeam. And he's had this hornbeam a long, long time. So I will begin by seeing what the surface roots are like. Whenever you look at your trees, especially the ones that you haven't done for a long time, the moss that collects on the surface detracts from the surface roots, or what we call nebari, because the surface roots are as important as the superstructure or the twigs and branches. So let's see what lies beneath this and we will take it off. The tree is tied in nicely and we will now see what is there. It's not an in-curve pot so it should come out of the pot quite easily. and behold you can see that it is quite congested very very congested and the roots at the edges are black so I guess some of them could be even rotten but the tree itself is healthy so I think it's about time it did get a repot compost tea is used is quite good, it's very gritty. For those of you who have small trees, these commercial rakes which are made uh, originally in Japan, but now we have our own make, these are made for us by a Chinese manufacturer, they are very very good for trees of this size. People use all sorts of implements to do their repotting. I remember when I used to be in the British Bonsai Association about 40 years ago, we had members used to 
use their ordinary household eating forks and bend the ends and use it like that. It worked after a fraction, not the most efficient, but it works. I'm always amused by what we call gatekeepers who say, oh, you must use a certain type of tool. You must learn to improvise. Remember when bonsai was first started by the Chinese thousand or two thousand years, more than thousand years ago, about two thousand years ago, what implements did they have? Nothing. And the cut and go, they probably used kitchen knives to do the cut and go. So to say that you have to have the best tools uh, doesn't really make sense. So don't be put off by people who tell you that you've got to use this tool, you've got to use that tool. Learn to improvise. Okay, so without having to jet the soil off, I can see that it's got very nice radial roots. So we will try and show that as a lovely flare because this has been grown from a small tree and a lot of the detail has been created just by meticulous pruning. Now looking at the tree from several sides, you look at it like this, that second trunk is going backwards. I was looking at it mainly from this side as the front, but looking at it from this side, this side is also very nice because this leader is leaning towards you. So don't you think this is a much nicer side? Okay, so I can see straight away that there are one or two defects in this tree because uh, the owner has just been pruning the outline. You see how some of these branches come inwards. So that really is something which we need to correct. We can either rewire to make it grow out this way, like so, or better still, we could simply cut it off there and let the branch grow in that direction for the future or even here. Now this is coming back. It shouldn't really be coming back too much. All right, the long shoots are cut off. It's also become rather flat topped. So to get rid of that flatness, I'm going to take that long one off, take this one off so that it's more of a dome shape. Now this is a glaring error here. Can you see how this branch is coming back on itself like that? It's doing nothing. So maybe I could either wire it flat if I want to, but perhaps not. I just shorten it like that. So I got rid of the crossing branches. So always look critically, critically to see how you can improve it. Even from this side, it should be a conical shape. So we've done this to the tree, so we've improved it straight away just by a little bit of judicious pruning. See, this also curling back on itself. So it shouldn't really do that. So we will pot it up like this. So we will do all the potting in one go. So we'll keep them aside. We will look at the trees first, and then we will proceed to Repot them the next tree we're going to tackle is the Chinese larch. For those of you who are not very familiar with larches, I could tell straight away that it's not the Japanese larch. Somehow the bark is different and the buds are also different. And Chinese larch, see our customer here has very carefully documented it. So that's the botanical name, Pseudo Larix. Anabilis, Chinese golden larch, which is the correct name. So it's growing very healthy. So let's give it a trim first before we look at the roots. So I'm going to ask Tyler here to trim it. So he's going to explain what he's going to do. So how will you proceed? Just going to go for the long shoot straight away. The ones but, that are uh, really how, what sort out. of shape are you looking for? Almost. And we aim for the, yeah, the kind of conical, conical shape. Conical shape, all right, okay. So it's quite wide. Far away. So we'll keep trimming back away. Yeah, an imaginary line to make the triangle. And trimming a lot more off the top. Than yes, the bottom. Yeah. yes, sure. Are you able to visualize the triangle? You know, a lot of yeah. people have difficulty. 
Yeah, so like it's an imaginary line. Really stick out. Yeah. So the triangle is from every side, not just from the front or back. Yeah. You've got to turn it sideways as well. Okay. You can see how that also needs to be like a triangle. Yeah. So anything outside that triangle, we cut off. We don't bother about the crossing branches at this stage. Later on we will do that, but for the time being we will only look at the outline first. So when a tree is growing healthy like this, it's not difficult. Okay. Whenever I do classes, I find that people somehow find it very difficult to visualize the triangular shape. I don't know why, they go inside the branches and spoil the triangle. So you have to look at the overall view, like an imaginary line going right across. Now don't go too deep, you've got to stick to the outside. Yeah, getting there. The top northwest corner over there, you can see yeah. over here. Uh, yeah, yeah? okay. people who watch the videos there's always going to be critics who say that you're not doing it correctly now there are variations but I'm just telling you about the general principle now that's a very respectable shape and now if you just take the extreme tips off to stop it growing longer but don't go inside the structure just the tips and that should be a very presentable tree now so simple all right so it doesn't need wiring the shape is perfect so a lot of density, ramification. So this is a nice tree. So we now take the root ball out and let's examine the roots. Is it tied? If it's tied, cut the wire off. Yeah. Yes, tie. So it returns. See, it's quite pot bound. It's even got mycelium. Wow. Larches don't often get mycelium, but this one does. Uh, it's usually the pines and the beech. So the roots are very active, very healthy, very good condition. So it's rising out of the pot. So we'll just tease it and we will repot it. We don't want to show you every tree that we repot. So you know what the, the drill is. We will try and improve the surface roots and take out all the shoots which are going round and round in a circle. So when you repot your tree, it's always a good time to improve the surface roots, nebari. So we'll show you this to you again in a minute. So just to show you what is going on, I've now cut the tie wires from uh, the pots so that the pots can be freed from the tree and you notice that we always put the trees like this for those of you who are relatively new to bonsai this is a trick that i keep uh, emphasizing and showing people who have not done it before the reason for doing it like this is that if you tip the root ball on its side the water drains out so you can see that patch of water there that is the water that has trickled out in the last two minutes just by holding it up at an angle the water will just drip out if i can show you on this chinese larch i've taken out of the pot i'm now going to hold it on the side 
and you will see that the water will drip through. I think I better put it on the bench. I'm holding the camera with one hand and trying to hold the tree with the other. So you can see how wet it is. So you can see the water coming out. Can you see at the end? Can you see how the water's trickling out from there? You see, can you see the water drops falling? See, just by holding at the end, the water drips out, almost like a tap. So before you repot a tree, and they've been outside, if you do this, let the water drain out, and then it'll make the repotting that much easier, so you don't have a soggy root board. If it's not losing much water this way, then the tree is probably okay. So we're going to look at the roots of all these trees, and you can see this one. This is a camisipris, it's a sawara cypress, and you see how matted the root ball is. So this definitely is in need of repotting. Again, the signs of a healthy tree, the tips of the root ends are white, which shows growth. Different trees have different colored roots, like this Chinese privet, the roots are white in color. And the roots of this maple, this is a katsura, are brown. So different trees have different colored roots. And this is a Chinese elm. Again, I've tipped it on its side, so I will show you. This pot has got a slight in-curve. So with the slight in-curve, I had to prise it up with the end of the root hook. So the roots are this color and Chinese elms are very vigorous trees. So this is definitely in need of repotting. Chinese juniper roots are brown in color. Again, not very pot bound, but since he's brought it to me, I will go through it. You see how open it is. By no means pot bound, but we'll do it for him. And then the Japanese five needle pine or the white pine, you see how healthy the roots are, and it's got a bit of mycelium as well underneath. So these will all be teased out. So we'll keep them tipped up like this and then we will look at it. Now we're going to look at another tree which is in an in-curve pot. Now in-curve pots may look nice, but once the trees grow in it, there's no danger of the tree falling out of the pot. But we've got to get out of this pot. So what we do, I've brought this special tool. This is a Japanese sickle. And the purpose of this tool is to go around the perimeter to cut away so that it frees the tree from the pot. So if you do that, Tyler, just go around. It's like cutting cake. Go right around with a sickle and we can get the tree out. Sometimes trees that have been very pot bound for a long time, it can take a long while do do the cutting but there's no other way of getting it out short of sometimes smashing smashing the pot you have to do more than that yeah. more than that now that tree is a very interesting tree i'll talk about it when i look at that tree on uh, the next uh, phase of the process. It's like a bird's nest, but ever so interesting. I need to cut deeper. It's taken us about two whole minutes to get it out. Look at the roots, completely gone round. So if you cut that perimeter out, that will have to be cut off anyway. Again, very healthy tree, nice, friable, open compost. 
Okay, so we're going to deal with that one. Okay, let's look at each of these trees in turn. So we're going to look at this Chinese privet next. And in just a couple of minutes, look at the water that has come out of that root ball. Just by holding it at a slight slant like this, and all the water has trickled out from there. So we can now deal with it. And we can deal with all the others in the same way. The next tree we are going to look at is this Camisipris. I think it's a Sawara Cypress. He's called it a false cypress. And he purchased it in August 2016. I don't know what state it was when he purchased it, but for all intents and purposes, it's almost become like a piece of raw material. Um, so we've got to do something to this tree to make it look more like a bonsai. So the roots are quite nice. And this was the pot in which it was in, rectangular with a curved edge, slightly incurved. But you notice that all the branches are springing upwards. Now, conifers, by its very name, conifer means a cone-shaped tree. It is an inverted cone. So we don't want that shape. We want a proper cone. That means branches hanging downwards. So this is what I'm going to do. So if you now hold the camera for me, I will show you very briefly what I'm going to do. So this is the plan of action. Making the branches hang down, you can see straight away it begins to look like a conifer. So we will set about doing that. Also, these branches, these I think I can now more or less treat as sacrificials. If I were to spread it out, because they're thick branches, the thick branches will contrast with the trunk and make the trunk look thin. So I think it's best to make those into bits of driftwood or gins. I know it's low down, but they will end up as gins. So these are the branches we could possibly use. So off it comes. Remember, this customer has given me a free hand. He trusts me and I'm not going to betray his trust. I'm going to make this tree look so different that he'll be over the moon. So that's the start of making the gin. I will show you how to refine it later on. So that's not a lesson in gin, this person really dealing with the rest of the tree. But knowing me, you get carried away wanting to perfect this bit. Anyway, so that's the plan of action. So looking at the tree very quickly, we were just wired before we take a final des decision as to which is going to be the front, which is going to be the back. This is quite nice here. Many of these cypresses need to be constantly kept clean. That means the dead twigs and foliage need to be cleared out, otherwise it looks a mess. Not many people know how to deal with these trees to begin with. You have to constantly take the ends out, otherwise they start reaching the sky. If you don't do this, you lose control of the tree completely. So this is how you do that. Go into the wood and take the tips out. So let's do some very rudimentary wiring and give some shape to the tree. I haven't decided on that yet, but I will think about it in a minute. But I can see straight away I can use those two. I can probably use those. So. We will set about wiring these, so I'm not going to show you the actual wiring process. Suffice it to say, they will all be wired to get this shape. All right, so we've now wired the first two branches. You see what a difference that's made straight away. 
now we've got to decide what else to wire. I'm just taking the tips out. By taking the tips out, you'll cause bud back further into the wood. That's a task you have to do all the time. So these branches are all usable, all usable. I've got a situation here where there's growth here, but there's a very long, lanky growth there. So should I use that? Probably not. I don't have to have all the branches the same length. I can have some short and some long. So I'm going to make this a short branch. So this one, as I said, I'm going to decide later on whether I need it or not. If I don't need it, I'll make it into a gin, but if I need it, I will wire it. So let's proceed by wiring some of these and then see what the effects will be. So all these will be wired down like so. And when it's wired, we will show you what results from it. So this is what we've done so far. We've taken quite a few of these branches off, especially the lower ones. And the tree has now been transformed simply by making it into a conical shape. Uh, if it's too long, I will take some of these tips out to emphasize the cone shape. As I said, the tips need to be constantly taken back. Otherwise, they keep extending and extending. In a year, you could get about four to six inches growth even as a bonsai, so important to keep control of it. So I was reminded that the front was somewhere here. We took these branches off, but we've now made this the front, like this, like that. So we've turned it around virtually 90 degrees, making this the front. Now, what do we do with that branch? I know you can put it down like that. There's a case for using that if you wish. But I think with most conifers, high branches are probably better. So if I use the famous bag trick, I think it looks better without that branch. So we will get rid of that branch and we will make a gin from it. Like so. And then we refine the gin and we pot it up in this angle and of course the original pot was only this size I think it's a bit small we probably need a pot about two or three inches longer either a rectangular or oval or even a round pot would, would do so we will show you what we do when we put it in a spot so that's that one done we are now moving on to the next two trees and just in the space of about half an hour look at the water that has trickled out from the root ball just by putting it on its side. Look at that. Trail of water has trickled through. The other ones, this also, this elm, you see how much water has trickled through this one just by putting it there. Now these two trees haven't been too wet, so they're okay. So we we'll probably do these two next. So the next tree is this one, which is, believe it or not, Chinese ash. So those of you who know your trees will see that the terminal buds are very typical of ash. Even the European and English ash looks like this. And of course, because this gentleman keeps such meticulous records, let's see what it is called. It is Fraxinus sinensis, Chinese ash, purchased 2011. So he purchased it 13 years ago. And I dare say, this would be a commercial tree and there is what might appear to be a defect here. You see that crossing branch here. Now I know that in a lot of these Chinese nurseries they do a lot of these funny things just to create the triangular shape. So they've used that branch to go that way to form the triangle. If you were to remove it the tree wouldn't look quite the same. You could still remove it but I think they've kept it for that reason because it forms that balanced triangle that side if you hold the camera like this you get that view so you get the whole tree I'll just show you what I mean so the triangular shape is still there I won't want to interfere too much with it I'll probably take it back there you see how that head forms there if I were to remove it it's still okay but I think it would be a bit lost without it so I will keep it 
So sometimes these things are done which you might think is a fault, but you see with that the tree looks complete. The triangle looks complete. So I wouldn't prune too much. I want to dead stubs I'll take off. But apart from that, the tree is in good condition. And again, because we are swapping the pots around, so this pot which had the Sawara cypress in it will probably be used for this. I don't know whether this was it. Yeah, so this one would fit. So save him buying too many pots. We haven't invested any new pots yet. So this one is going into this one. Now let me show you. So stay there. I'll bring you another tree. Now all this water is coming from this tree. And this is a maple. And the maple is Katsura. Katsura, I think it probably came from our nursery because years ago we purchased a f quite a few of these from Japan. So this tree in this position is quite nice, but you can always see what the possibilities are when you change the angle of planting. <coughs> if we plant it more like this, can you see it's more upright, whereas like this, the tree is leaning too much. So if you were to plant it back in this position, you see how nice it looks like that. You still got a lot of movement, but the tree is a little more upright and still leaning. So when we come to repot the tree, we're going to put it at this angle. So this is how this tree will end up. So we repot this and then we will deal with the others in turn. The next tree is this very complicated Chinese elm and with the amount of twiggery or ramification it clearly is a very very old tree. Now let's go to this customer's list or records. These are the bonsai as of 21st February 2024 and the first tree is the Ulmus Barbie Flora Chinese elm. He said purchased before 2004. He can't remember when he purchased it. And he thinks it's 50 years old and I can well believe it is uh, 50 years old. So if he remembers purchasing it more than 20 years ago, I think he must have had it for the last 25 or 30 years. So to say that this tree is over 50 years old is not an exaggeration. So you can see how congested it is ramification is nice but there comes a point where too much of a good thing can be bad so this is what we say too much of a good thing so let's look at it critically from every side we're trying to find the best face of the tree i can see that because most of the back branches are here um, this could continue to be the back of the tree I'm also looking at the line, the angles. You see some of these branches, if you hold the camera for me. You see how they've shot up like that and come like that. So that probably was an unwanted branch from the past. I will have to think carefully whether I will retain it or not. What it certainly needs is some thinning out. So let's gradually take things out bit by bit not scalping it entirely but creating space between the different layers of branches and then see what we get so you see I'm taking the upper portions of some of these pads also bearing in mind that I want to create the proverbial triangular shape What I do usually frightens a lot of people because I'm able to see or I'm able to visualize or have a vision of what the final shape will be. Don't ask me how I do it, but I just managed to do it. So just by doing those two branches, you see what a difference I've made. Let's bring the back trick and show you what I mean. It's just rationalizing all this complicated stuff. You can see, that's what I've done. I'm going to do some more to it. 
So anything rising up, spoiling the pad, I'm going to take off, but making sure that I still leave some space between branches, but not spoiling all the ramification. It's like going to a hairdresser's. I remember as a boy when I used to have my hair cut, I used to come back and my mother used to tell me, you haven't had enough hair taken off, you know, but you didn't want too much hair taken off. So sometimes you don't want to scalp the thing completely. So getting your money's worth is not just removing everything. You've got to remove it judiciously. Those of you who are hairdressers, and quite a few of my customers are hairdressers, two of my customers are Italian of origin, and they are hairdressers, and they always tell me that what I do in bonsai is exactly what they do in their trade as a hairdresser. So it's layering the branches so that you find layers between successive branches, not just hacking the ends, a lot of people, if they don't know what to do, well, it's better than doing nothing. But just taking the tips off is not sufficient. You've got to go into the structure and create layers in the structure. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm leaving layers. You see, I haven't cut those branches off. I'm just taking layers out, making sure that they're not crisscrossing. And of course, if it gets too congested, it encourages a lot of disease because fresh air can't get into the branches. So you can see how much I've taken off already. You see, compared to this side, you see how, what I've done here. It is still a regulated structure. The main structure is there, but the twigs which are too many are being thinned out a little bit. Look at the contrast between this and that. You see, this is what I'm trying to create. I'm not just taking the ends off, I'm looking at the inside and seeing what I can take from the inside to create the space between branches and layers and pads. The tips need to be taken off, that goes without saying. That's fine. You can see how I've pinned out this quite a bit. I'm going towards the top. Let me create the outline and then I will go inside. This is so tree-like, you know, trees like this occur in nature. Those of you who live in the tropics, you know that the tropical rain trees, Albizia, huge trees, they have this sort of structure. the ends they will just grow inwards. So I'll try to untangle the inward growing branches. It's like loosening their lungs so that they can breathe again.
think we need to have a before and after shot to compare how much I've taken off. I think it's tinder. Look, look at all this. This is what I've taken off. All that. I reckon I've taken maybe 40% out. So it can now breathe. It's still quite a large dome shape. And because the original pot stay there, I will bring the original pot and have a look. I think it can still go back in that pot. Although now that pot looks a bit big, but we'll try and use it for something else. But so that's that tree done. And again the root ball is not too hot down. See it. Don't let too much moss creep up the trunk. See there's the trunk there. Quite a good flare. And if you don't watch it, you see how these roots have gone the wrong way. Instead of growing radially, they're backing up on themselves. So that root will have to be dealt with somehow, because it doesn't look like a radial root. This, by the way, for those who are new to bonsai, this is called liverwort. Liverwort. It's a type of moss, I think, but it prevents the trees from breathing and it keeps the soil too wet, so don't let it grow. Discourage it from growing. So this is the root I was telling you about. Look at it, see how it's going from there. That one, it shouldn't be there. That's an ugly root. Doesn't do the surface roots of the Nibari any good. So we wait for it to take that off. So when you come to repotting your trees, that's an ideal time to improve the surface roots. And if you wish, elms propagate from root cuttings very easily, so that will make several new trees. Beautiful flare to the root. Beautiful flare. See that? root is also doing nothing. See, because the moss covers the roots, you see that's going the wrong way again. Let me look at that. So some of these can certainly come off. But elms are very vigorous trees, so you don't have to worry too much about them. Look at that beautiful flare there. And the angle of planting is still fine. So we'll probably put it back in that same pot. So that's that tree done. So we're going through all these trees quite rapidly. Stay there, I'll bring another tree. This is the Japanese five beetle pine or the white pine. You see over a period of time they lose their disposition or angle. It's growing like this. It's okay, very healthy tree. But I think if it is put more upright like that, you see the trunk better. And this is crying out to be wild. So we wire all these branches, create more of a triangular shape, and we will show you how we progress with that. So this is what we're aiming to do. We're going to wire all this to create more of a structured shape. I know it's okay to just leave it to grow unchecked, but if you don't keep it wide, they do lose the shape. They will soon become faceless almost, you know, it won't look like a bonsai anymore. So we're going to wire this one. Now, I think last tree, which is the Karokia. This tree, let's look at his list again. No, it's not. It's a New Zealand tree. Coprosma kirkii, variegata, variegated co coprosma. And it's a New Zealand tree, they call it a zebra tree. And purchased before 2004, he can't remember when he purchased it. So he's owned it for at least 20 years. And I dare say he's had it 25 to 30 years. 
And it is one of those things that in garden centers and nurseries, they sell them as little shrubs. And you see, it's just been allowed to grow, very healthy tree, and the trunk has got so much character and it's just intertwined with itself. And by constant pruning, it's been growing back into its structure and the branches are all over the place. So I think we need to do something about this one. So let me put it up at a slightly different angle. These trees have all become like canopies or umbrellas. We need to create some structures. So straight away you can see that this branch is shooting back inwards. So that's obviously something we don't want to grow like that. So that branch has come out. And there are some leggy twigs, lack of light, lot of crossing branches, dead branches as well. So all is not perfect. But the general health of the tree is good. And there's some suckers coming up, but you see the suckers are green, they're not variegated. So if you don't control the variegated parts, the tree will soon be taken over by the green shoots. I don't want to do too much to this tree because you know, it's hard to get a decent style out of it, but I'll try my best. Again, there's so much congestion. It's just like a bird's nest. But what I do know is that it buds back very easily. There's even a case for making it like a semi-cascade make it more interesting. Just selectively pulling. You see this green bit, variegated trees have this habit where if you don't control the green shoots, it can revert. It's called reversion. It's, the green will dominate the tree because green is a stronger growth than variegation. So it's a term we call reversion, reverting to the green form. very common with variegated plants and especially if you don't grow them in a sunny spot they will turn green sun helps to keep the variegation so to make it a bonsai we need to show the roots we need to show the structure of the tree
I feel as though this customer has given me a challenge, you know, see what he can do to test me out. That's interesting like that. He needs courage to do that, but you've got to be confident that you're not going to scalp it too much. See, I'm trying to bring out the beauty of the trunk. You see, that's a very interesting feature. So that's what I'm trying to do. And rather than let it continue growing as a flat top tree, it's going to get more definition of a recognizable bonsai shape. So this is now what we can appreciate. I won't go too mad. I've taken about 50% of it out. Look at it. So we plant it back like this so that it looks more uh, bonsai for want of a better word. So that's how we will deal with this. The roots are strong so we're going to tease the roots. Maybe put it in a rectangular pot or a round pot. We will see. So that is almost all. I'm not going to wire it. We're going to wire the Japanese five needle pine. Okay. I've just put two pieces of wire on this five needle pine and just by putting two pieces of wire I've changed the shape of the tree almost completely and because it's leaning too much I'm going to pot it finally at this sort of angle slightly up. So I've changed it by like 15 degrees that's all. And I'm going to wire all these pads flat. Some of these low branches will be taken off. I can see that I don't need them. Terrifying for people who are not used to it, but sometimes you have to take some of it off. So that will come off as well. So we wire these pads. And that will be wired as well. I don't want to make the tree looking too sparse, so I'm going to wire virtually everything in sight. So all these branches are going to be wired, and we will make this triangular shape. Even these will be wired like that, without cutting much off, and we will change the shape quite considerably by giving this classic dome shape, or triangular shape. Okay. So let me show you the progress of the trees that we are repotting for our customer. We've trimmed them and we've got them in their pots. I would just say that we've changed the pot slightly. We tried to use his old pots but we swapped them round. Trees which were in smaller pots have been up to the next size pot. So we will show you a closer view against the white background, but just to show you where we've got to, we're still in the process of repotting them all, changing the angle of planting. And when we've finished repotting, we'll show you the trees, what they're like.
But meanwhile, I have the final tree, which is a real problem tree. This is a Chinese juniper, a kisu, which I believe he purchased more than 30 years ago, and it's certainly lost its way. So if he's kept it for more than 30 years, it must have been at least 20 by the time it came here. So I would say these trees are at least a minimum of 50 years old. So in the 80s or even earlier, there were a lot of these trees being imported. But I think the top may have died on this tree. So it now looks like a catapult with the V shape like that. And bonsai with that V shape, you can't do much with it. You could isolate the branches and make pads with it, but it would be hard to get a decent tree because the branches need to be very short and close to the trunk. But anything is possible. But I thought rather than make it a single trunk tree, I will still maintain the double trunk and make it into a semi-cascade. So that's a challenge. I'm not doing just for the sake of doing it, but I'm doing it because I can see that there is a possibility. So watch this space and I'll show you how. So I'm about to start doing something to this juniper and because I may put wire on the trunk I better clean the trunk a bit so you can see if you leave these junipers for too long as I always say to people you see the bark just peels off and this time it was given a spring clean and we'll clean the trunks so that they look nice and red again so using a little knife and get, get it off and then use a brass brush to brush the trunk up. So that's what I'm going to do and after that I'm going to put some thick wires on and I'm going to wire them and you're going to see the shape transformed in front of your very eyes. So I've cleaned the trunk up. So you see how nice and red it is just from cleaning it. And because these are too stiff to bend anyway, I'm not going to take wire around the thick part of the trunk. I can bend these bits. So from here you can see there are like four branches coming out. One, two, three, four. I don't want to cut them off because this tree hasn't got a lot of branches. So I'll keep as many as possible. I'm going to wire them in pairs and then I'm going to wire these as well. So when I've done the wiring, I will show you what I plan to do. Okay? So I put wires on these branches, you see, one pair, two pairs, three pairs of wires I put on. And I've used, I think, three and a half mil wire. So what I want to do is to create different levels, but cascading down. These ones also a bit higher. Let's see if I need it, I will use it. If I don't use it, I can always get rid of it. And this one I'm going to make a little head. All cascades and semi-cascades should have a head. And by wiring it tight, I can get the thing to be more compact. So you see how I've made it compact just by doing this. Alright, so that's made it compact. I'm now going to create pads. Whoa, whoa. So there might be some superfluous branches, but because there are not a lot of mature branches, I'm going to try and keep as many branches as possible. Well, they are superfluous, sadly. They will come off. top is too dense I will probably remove it so this is the plan ok 
here. So that's how it's looking. But I'm now going to refine it by taking some of the underside off. And I will study this silhouette. Is reluctant to take things off because there isn't much growing in the right places. Anything hanging downwards I'm going to take off. get the general idea trying to make a head and then taking this down to make another pad this way so I'll put a few more wires on so you can see how I've changed the shape already that ugly looking V shape has disappeared because I've done it like this so I'm going to refine it a little further so you must admit that this tree has undergone a complete transformation so nothing is impossible nothing is impossible so let's choose an appropriate pot for this tree. As I told you, this gentleman has given me a free hand to choose what I wish. I know that the convention is to use unglazed pot, but I think as a semi-cascade pot, that is a possibility. This is also a possibility. Like so. Or if you would like a round one, this is also possible. So there's so many choices. Well, without knowing what his particular tastes are, I think I will go for the black one. This is more conventional and more in keeping, so I will tease the roots and get it into this pot. Okay? So I'm going to show you the finished product after all the work we've done. So this is a little horn beam. We changed the pot and I think they originally used this side as the front, but I think we prefer this as the front. So that's that one done. So if we move that on, we put the Chinese larch next. Again, we put it in a slightly larger pot. That didn't need much work to it. We just trimmed the twigs into a better shape and no wiring at all. But we changed the pot for a more appropriate size pot. So that's done. Number three is the Chinese ash. Again, we didn't do much to the branches. We just trimmed the overall shape. Typical Chinese style tree. So that's also looking nice. But again, we changed the pot to a slightly larger pot. So that's done. And then this Sawara Cypress, which has had a dramatic facelift. I hope the editor can find a before shot and show the before shot with the after shot. It bears no resemblance to what it looked like before we worked on it. So that's that one done. And then the Katsura maple, we repotted it at a slightly different angle so that it's more upright. It was tending to be a bit sat upon like a cross sitting on the top of the branches flattening everything so that was repotted at that angle we chose a new pot for this one so we've used an olive green oval pot for a maple fine now this one this is the new zealand tree coprosma this is a tree with very dramatic branches and trunk. 
and I thin the tree so that you can see the complexity of the trunk and the branches, no wiring done, just pruning and we've chosen an oval pot it was in a round pot, in curved pot so we've changed the look of that tree and then the Chinese elm, an old tree just by trimming and taking out a lot of the crossing branches we've created a new shape And we've used one of the other pots. This was the pot which I think it had the New Zealand tree in. Okay. No, that was in curve. Remember, Ron, in curve. Uh, yeah, of course. Anyway, whatever it is, we've I think the Katsura was in this one. Yes. Okay, so we've changed that. So this tree looking like we've changed the overall shape rather than having a flat top tree, it is more dome shaped. Okay. And then the pine also had a very dramatic facelift because we wired it. We wired it completely again. We didn't cut any branches off, just wiring. And in a slightly larger pot. So I hope we can get a screenshot of what it looked like before. So that's done. And the tree that looks most dramatic was this one, the catapult, the catapult juniper. We've made it into a fairly credible semi-cascade tree. I've created a nice head and two long cascading branches, semi-cascading branches. So there you go. I hope the customer will be pleased. And as I say, he gave me a free hand and this is what we have produced for him. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll try and get screenshots of the before condition of the tree so that you can compare and contrast before and after. There you go. Well, I'm just doing a video of a tree that a customer has brought in. He wanted to change the pot, but try as much as we did we couldn't find a suitable pot of either the right size we were looking at a cream or a green pot but although maples should go into glazed pots i think this is quite appropriate the japanese would put it in a smaller pot because the japanese tend to under pot their trees but i'm more comfortable with trees of this size so this is a lovely example of a broom style. You know what variety it is? Is it Kyohima? Kashima. Kashima. Okay, Kashima are sometimes trained in this style. So it's in very good condition. Very, very good example. So for the benefit of my YouTube viewers, here is a very, very delightful tree. And although the customer is wanting a new pot, we've advised him that we don't, we're going to forego a sale. We're not going to sell him a pot that is not needed, so this pot would be right for this tree for quite a while. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it.